guys and welcome to Fruity Friday. So I'm going to be doing these live health talks every single Friday at five o'clock here on Happy on Fruit. And uh, they're basically just going to be a little combination of whatever health topic I want to talk to you guys about this week and a little Q&A as well. So this week um, the topic of conversation is going to be Actually, I'm going to let you guys decide that one. So what do you want to hear about this week? Um, so would you like to hear more about uh, how to shop as a raw fruit fruitarian? How to deal with it on a budget? Uh, do you want to focus more on emotional healing this week? Uh, let me know down in the live chat what you would like this week to focus on. I do have some questions given to me from a, a follower who would like me to answer these. So I'm going to jump in and I'm going to answer these questions for her. Um, I think as well what I'm going to do, because if you've been watching the Fruity Fridays past, I've actually been doing a lot of um, kind of health shows with my daughter where we've been kind of doing some games and some silly bits and stuff um, but that was kind of more over lockdown and what I was trying to do for that I was trying to make it really child friendly um, because I know everyone had their children around and everything and I know you guys still do obviously because uh, schools break up about three o'clock but some of the kids are starting to go back to school now uh, so I think I want to shift our Fruity Fridays back to more of a mature approach to healing. So we can really talk about some more mature subjects here. Um, so my daughter's in the other room, she's uh, watching dinosaurs, <laughs> um, eating a big huge watermelon. And um, what we're going to be doing on our Fruity Friday live talks is we're going to be having yeah, just conversations about things that are a bit more mature. So we'll be able to dive into maybe eating disorders or uh, addiction. Um, and some of the kind of more rough and raw areas of healing that I think we all need to talk about. Um, especially over like we, th this whole situation we've all gone through, this lockdown we've all gone through. Um, and life is starting to slowly get back to some place of normality in areas. Um, it's absolutely not close to normal here. But um, there's definitely been a huge traumatic experience we've all gone through together hugely traumatic um you know it's brought up a lot of obsessive compulsive disorders within me of uh, like almost just this absolute just feeling of being unclean um is really risen in me and it's taken a lot of inner work for me to actually calm myself down and function um so that was mainly at the beginning i don't know if you follow my posts like particularly uh, like as rigidly as i post them but um earlier in the lockdown i was really facing some proper issues with uh just getting really obsessive about cleaning myself and um like when i'd get home from shopping I i'd want to wash all of my clothes um, and I, I just wouldn't be able to sit down until I was clean and it was it was really stressful and I even put up a post saying how I was thinking about like not thinking about smoking again but how I was just like drawn towards it um, and how just parts of me would just I, I just felt the feeling inside that I just wanted to release the pressure with smoking and um, I'm so glad I didn't by the way I absolutely didn't manage to work through it um, with emotional healing uh, techniques and like the self-love work that I was doing and like this releasing uh, technique and I managed to get through that. Um, I got a question down that says, uh, have you had any addictions? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, addictions galore. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I've had, um, I had a cocaine addiction when I was a teenager um, in early 20s. I uh, was addicted to speed, um, we called it base, um, I have had, I've been addicted to smoking, um, I've used alcohol a lot but then with alcohol there was maybe an addiction there but at the same time I never felt like massively a need to drink, it was always kind of, like I never drunk because I was sad, I always wanted drugs instead I, for some reason alcohol has never been something that clutches me um it's always something that maybe i would do for like um i do might do an evening and binge on it and, and get really really drunk but then 
I don't feel inclined to do that for ages afterwards. Like, I just, just don't really, it's not, uh, I suppose it's the hangover. I just don't do well with having headaches and stuff. Um, but yeah, definitely had a lot of addictions and a lot of uh, addictive behaviours. I've had eating disorders, which have been almost like a, an addiction. Um, like bulimia was very addictive, that feeling of release. Um, it's something that I've had to get that feeling of release almost from healthy ways, um, such as just going for a run, helping me clear my mind, uh, doing yoga, meditation, forgiveness exercises on myself. Um, so forgiveness exercises are just incredible where you can think inwardly to yourself and just literally just tell yourself, I forgive you. You know, I give you permission to mess up. I give you permission to make mistakes. I love you anyway. When we can say that to ourselves, it's like, it's like it just takes the weight off. I'm like, whoa, I don't need to feel so upset with myself anymore. I don't need to feel like I'm in so much pain. Like when you just say, I forgive you completely. And when you practice doing that, you get better at it. So you, you just, it just gets easier to forgive yourself. And that's a huge release. And that's a healthy release, as opposed to binge eating a load of food and then, you know, being sick or something, which again, it provides you with a release, but it's so damaging and it's so hurtful. It's, it's self-abusive behaviors. And that's what you want to avoid. When you need a release to avoid self-abusive behaviors, um, or like such as eating food that hurts you, like, you know, food that you know hurts you and you're eating it almost like, yeah, that's an addiction, you know, you can be addicted to the chemicals in food, you can be addicted to salt, oil, sugar, high fat, high sugar combos. You can be addicted to so many different things. Um, and I think it's just awareness. So I'm always trying to teach people, like with my inner work course, always trying to teach people about awareness. So being aware of your, your thoughts, your feelings, so that you can kind of almost understand your triggers, you can understand what's going on within you. So if you're basically, if you're responding to the world in, with an unhealthy habit, you, to be able to change that habit, you need to first be aware of it. Um, if you're not aware of how your behaviors are reactions to your world, you're not gonna be able to change your behaviors. Um, so being able to almost like take a step away from yourself and view yourself from external is really helpful for your healing because then you'll be able to actually notice your patterns of behavior and then you can change them. You know, like for me, it was, you know, whenever I get really stressed or whenever I get really perfectionisty, uh, where everything has to be perfect and I have to be perfect, that's when I can get really triggered with eating disorders. You know, when things start to go wrong in other aspects of my life, I almost like blame myself. Um, and I, I'm not, I'm saying this not because I have a million and one issues. I'm, what I'm saying is I've noticed this about myself. I notice this pattern, patterns of my mind, um, but I don't always act on it. So sometimes I notice insults coming at me from me, like something just horrible. I'll, I'll just say, oh, you're so ugly or something like that. And I'm just like, why? And I think, almost like from so an outsider's point of view, I think, why am I, why am I thinking that? Like? You know, almost like if your friend was sitting in front of you and your friend just said, I'm ugly, and you're looking at your friend, you're thinking, why have you just said that? That's how I almost like think about myself. I try to take that step outside of me and view it from a more unbiased point of view, if you like. Um, like why am I calling myself ugly just because someone else thinks something or you know why do I feel the need to have them approve of me what about me do I not approve of myself uh, because if I was approving of myself completely then I wouldn't I wouldn't need their approval so it's always really important to reflect on your behaviors reflect on your thoughts think about where they're coming from and then you can help change them um, so what I want to do is I want to get into some of these questions that I've got. So if you have any questions for me, write them down in that little chat. It's not going to be a massive long one today. I say that, I'll still be here after an hour. You know I will. I just, I just can't stop blabbering on when I get started. Um, but I definitely want to do some really cool videos with you guys. I want to talk to you about my distiller. Um, I want to show you the gunk that is inside my distiller um, and talk a little bit about that. But first I wanna do some more in-depth research on uh, exactly what is in um, 
And what is in our tap water? Because I know, you know, there are hormones and there might even be um, trace amounts of drugs and things like that. And obviously there's lots of uh, inorganic minerals. But I'd like to do some more research before we get into all of that um, about exactly what they are. Do you know what I would love to do, actually? Do you know what I'd really love to do? I would love to get some kind of test analysis kit uh, and try that out on the gunk that is left over in my distiller. Um, and find out what is actually in tap water. That would be phenomenal, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that just be so cool? Or if I've got any chemist friends on here, uh, let's hook up and I'll, you can have some free gunk. And test the gunk. It'd be fun. Or I'll just teach Molly some more chemistry. She'll sort it out for me. Can't wait till she like knows more about chemistry. Uh, she's on her way. My, my daughter, she's a scientist. She's an eight-year-old scientist and she's a epic okay and so some of these questions that i said that i'll get to i just want to comment on them here so it says um what's your favorite pre and post run meals ah very very cool so before i go out for a run i don't like to eat anything <laughs> and every single running coach i've ever had has hated me for this <laughs> Because I'm really fast at running. I can't run when I've got food in my system. I hate it. I just, just don't like it. Um, I like to run on an empty stomach. That's like first thing in the morning. That's when I, I'm just on it. I'm just, I have my power mornings though. I wake up and I just absolute power morning. Um, and I just won't eat until after I've got all my jobs done. Because I just don't need to, you know. Um, but if I had to have something, like you ha have to have a little something before, uh, just like honestly, one or two ripe bananas, that's it. And that's maybe like an hour or so before, and that's coming from an empty stomach. Like if I had a, uh, yeah, just had to, had to eat something, like, um, did I eat before the half marathon? <laughs> I think I'm, did I? I might not have, I don't know. Um, if I had to, I would have had like, yeah, a couple of bananas and that's it you know, uh, nothing heavy, nothing, and, and it's not just what you eat, it's how much as well, if I was to eat, bananas are fine, but, but only one or two, if I was to have five bananas, it's just too much, and I would, I, it would impair my running, post run, everything, <laughs> all the foods, <laughs> the lot, I'd have the lot, I'm not joking, I just eat as much as I want, it's so good, um, <laughs> so, Typically, I would want to be having some greens as well. Like if I'm gonna, okay, let's answer this question properly. Um, I would want something that's quite dense, so and something that's going to digest quickly and easily. So I would probably have um, some kind of like green smoothie, but I would be making sure that the green smoothie was quite thick, so um, it's kind of just more dense. So it'd have dates bananas, maybe some of these beautiful persimmons here. Can you believe I have persimmons this time of year, by the way? I, I couldn't. So I bought the lot. Plus they were like six or seven for a pound. I know, <laughs> six or seven for a pound, it's ridiculous. Because they're ripe, my friends. And because, yeah, some of them squished in the bag, but I just took them out, gave them a little clean up, and I uh, put them in a Tupperware box and made persimmon pudding. So, yeah, persimmon pudding, perfect uh, uh, post run. I would chuck some greens in there as well to just replace minerals um, and help me to stay hydrated. And uh, yeah, and the magnesium is great for muscle relaxant, you know, after you've done like an intense thing, uh, intense exercise. So greens, absolutely wonderful. Greens, when I say greens, I mean your lettuces, my friends. So I'm talking about butter leaf lettuce, you know, in your smoothies, um, uh, little gem lettuce this sort of thing. This is the beautiful lettuce that you want in your smoothies. Um, and I'm literally adding both of these. If I was making a smoothie for me, both of these, maybe another one, you know? The great thing about greens is you can literally fill up your blend jug full of them, absolutely full of them. And then they blend down to like a fraction of the size. So you can, that's what smoothies are so great for, is getting in loads of those greens. So that's great for at the beginning of your raw journey, when you're new starting out raw. Um, it's also really good for when you are, um, uh, after you've been for a run, you just need to replace loads. So uh, yeah, they're absolutely phenomenal. So I'll be having, yeah, dates, persimmons, bananas. Um, and sometimes if I've been for a long run, so I mean, if I've been running for like two hours plus, or something, which I do sometimes, 
um, sometimes it's helpful just to have a little fat. So I, or I sometimes find, if I've done a huge run where I've burnt off a load of fat, because there's not loads of fat on me, I always don't quite feel satisfied unless I've had a little bit of fat. Um, so having like a, a bit of avocado in the evening is quite helpful, or sometimes a bit of raw vegan chocolate. <laughs> Just because I, when I usually do my long runs, right, I go around to my mum's and uh, that's when I, I go around there and I make my big smoothie, big green smoothie um, and I sit and I have that and then I'll, I'll kind of nibble on dates and my mum buys this like raw vegan chocolate for me and Molly so um, sometimes I'll have some of that just to take the edge off <laughs> because I always feel like I'm just, I could just eat and eat and eat. Um, and sometimes just having that fat just kind of like slows that down so I don't feel like I, I'm still hungry if I've just done like a two and a half hour run um, so yeah that's what I have for that uh, but yeah if you don't want to have like the raw chocolate or anything because it's not that great it's not what I would consider like a really health promoting food um, then I would just you could stick maybe uh, although I don't typically uh, encourage people to have high fat and high sugar together um, but it can help if you're just replenishing yourself from a long run. Um, you could always just put like some chia seeds or uh, some like flax seed in your smoothie. Um, alternatively, if you really don't want to mix them, um, just have like your lots of greens in your smoothie after, um, maybe some extra dates and things, and then for your dinner have something with a bit more fat in it. So I might make like a seeded dressing, so I'll make like this delicious garlic and uh oh what i have like garlic and uh, red pepper um tomato celery lemon all the good stuff that i usually make in my recipes um uh, and i'd have that with maybe a bit of avocado or i'd have it with some sesame seeds or some uh, flax seeds or something like that um and that's how i would just top up the fat so that's probably what i would do for running um where was my other questions? Oh, and if you want more of the recipes on the CD dressing, my recipe ebook is available. Um, it's only £11 at the moment and it's uh, reduced from 20 and that's just a lockdown offer that's happening at the moment. Um, I think it's going to be, well, lockdown is ending, so literally that is a limited time offer. All of my courses actually, the, the raw food course, which is usually uh, £79, is reduced at the moment to £20. Um, and the inner work course, which is usually £60, is also reduced to £20. Um, they're all available at the moment at that reduced rate so if you want to get involved with that if you want that before the lockdown offer finishes please just message me um, and let me know and just give me a shout and just say Rhiannon can I have your raw food course and I'll sort it all out for you um, but yeah that is ending so get on that now if you would like that but my raw recipe ebook is, is epic honestly it, it teaches you so many different tips and tricks every single recipe has a little section on it that tells you more information about like inspiring information about what's in that fruit like how it helps you and it's just really cool I put a lot of love into it so I hope you like it and it's pretty I made it pretty okay so it says do you pay attention to what you eat to recover quickly not really I eat the same all the time um I always recover quickly and I'm not saying that to be like big-headed or anything like that but that's the truth um I cut my hand a few days ago, a massive cut with a, a peeler and it's like almost healed. It's just healed so quickly. Um, so yeah, I, I generally recover quickly. I think as long as you stay hydrated um, like, and, and the water I drink is so pure and beautiful as well. It's, it's just wonderful. Uh, I just, I eat this every day, you know, um, and because I suppose I eat the same sort of things every day, like not exactly the same, like the, the the fruit that I eat each day changes, but it's always juicy. It's always full of an assortment of minerals and vitamins that all support your body naturally um, that I find I do recover quickly. So just eating a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables makes me recover quickly. Um, making sure I've got enough calories, you know, um, getting a good sleep afterwards. <laughs> Um, having a good rest day the next day. Oh, it's so important to rest um, after you've been training really hard. 
And so let yourself rest. And it's a beautiful, you know, on a Monday, the day after I've had like a massive, done a massive run, I'm just like, I'm chilled. I'm having a chill day, you know. Um, obviously, I'll do a bit of work in the evening. I'll do my raw food. Uh, I'll do my holistic parenting uh, workshop on a Monday over on my holistic parenting page um, where I'm just teaching children about inner work techniques and stuff. I do that, but it's not, we just, me and Molly just do crafts all day getting ready for it. And then I do the, the thing in, I do the show at about five. And then we go for a little walk afterwards, come home, have some dinner. Like it's, it's nothing too strenuous. So, uh, yeah, it's all good. Um, best tips for clear skin and looking after your teeth on a raw vegan diet. Uh, clear skin. Okay. So uh, I'm quite lucky. I've never had a massive issue with my skin. Um, but being raw vegan, definitely it's got a lot brighter. Um, I feel a lot fresher. I tan really easily and really well. Um, I don't burn, which is fantastic. Like, um, even if my skin gets a bit red, cause I've been in the sun a lot, it, it won't like really, really burn. It just kind of, um, it just goes red and then it goes brown. So that's, I think is due to hydration. So it really, really helps to be hydrated. Like it just helps everything to be hydrated. Your digestion is better, you feel better, your mood is better, your skin is better. You, you just, you feel lighter and brighter and more alert. And that's a lot down to um, just being hydrated. So that's the thing about raw food. Is it, you think it's gonna help just one aspect of your life. You think, oh, I'll go raw, I'll lose weight, or you know, maybe my uh, aches and pains will go. But then it just helps all these other things that you didn't even think about. Like your hair is just like, just, just grows and just feels thick and uh, you, you, you just feel brighter yourself. You, your feelings start coming up. Um, so you're able to actually do inner work to like resolve emotional issues. And there's just so many different um, aspects that are just really lovely that you don't even realize. So skin just nutrients, do you know what I mean? Um, high vitamin C fruits. So vitamin C is really cool. Um, I spoke a lot about this. I did a whole talk on vitamin C during uh, Fruity Friday, but I'll just recap this because it's really cool information. Um, so vitamin C is required to make collagen. So if have you ever seen those skincare product, products that are like collagen, collagen rich, collagen rich? Um, that's because the skin is, uh, the kind of the structure is from collagen. And um, for the body to make collagen, you require vitamin C. And when we get older, um, our bodies actually don't create as much collagen, which is why our skin loses elasticity and why skin ages so much. It's not one of the only reasons, but it's, it's a contrib contributing factor. That as we grow older, we get a reduced amount of collagen production. Um, so what we wanna do is we, wanna, we want to, our bodies to always have enough vitamin C to make enough collagen so our skin can be elastic and so our bodies can, can feel well and be strong and sturdy you know and uh you need to replenish your vitamin c stores every day every single day uh it's no good having a big smoothie full of uh you know vi high vitamin c fruits so like you've got like strawberries and uh, mangoes and orange in there um you could have that smoothie in in the morning on a tuesday um and yeah, that's really, really good. And you're gonna up your collagen production and you're gonna feel bright and, and wonderful. And, uh, but the thing is about vitamin C is it, it's water soluble. So if you have more than your body needs at that time, it's just going to flush it out. Um, which is just, it's, it's good because it means you can never have too much of it. So you don't have to ever worry about overdosing on vitamin C if you're just eating it from natural sources. But, um, it also means that you can't just eat high vitamin C on that Tuesday morning and then expect to still be kind of like topped up in vitamin C the next day because your body will have flushed it out of the system. So that's why the raw food diet is brilliant because every single day you're getting high vitamin C. You know, like my evening salad, I always have peppers in it. So peppers are one of the highest things in vitamin C that you can actually get. Um, so I think they're like a hundred and something milligrams of vitamin C per hundred grams. Like a hundred, uh, it's like a hundred and fifty-six or something milligrams. A, an orange is uh, sixty milligrams per hundred grams. So in my uh, in my dinner sauces, I'm having like a good three peppers or so. Sorry, they've still got the stickers on them. And having a good like three peppers or so in my dinner. Um, I'm also adding like a lemon to that as well. If I could even reach my lemons, um, 
I'm having like a lemon and I'm having uh, tomatoes as well. I'm having mango, I'm putting a, like a mango in there, which is high in vitamin C as well. Um, so I'm having all these different things. And then I'm having like loads of butter leaf lettuce. And did you know butter leaf lettuce is high in vitamin C? Yes. So I'm having all these things. I'm having like two of those butter leaf lettuces and I'm having it in my dinner. And I have that sort of thing every single evening, every single evening, you know? Um, and that's why the, it is, it's great to go raw. It's great to like, you know, or experiment or to, you know, add more raw. But a lot of people, you know, they, have, they do these raw challenges and stuff and they feel like, I say I feel really good and then they stop. And, uh, or, or people are raw for like, uh, you know, like a week or something like that. Um, and they, you know, they say, I haven't had this happen, I haven't had that happen. But the thing is, it's, it's about, what's the word? Um, what's the word? Consistency. It's about consistency. It's about doing it every day um, and just like making sure you're having that vitamin C every day. You're having those greens every single day. You're having enough calories from whole food sources every single day. You're reducing your, your coffee, your caffeine, your, uh, your alcohol, your smoking, your stress. You're reducing those things every day that actually <laughs> can ha play havoc with vitamin C um, and your absorption rates. So it's it's contributing factors. Everything is contributing together, um, which is why I try and talk about holistic health. It's not just about eating a, an, an apple. It's, it's about all the different things that we're doing and it's about how they all work together, you know, how the greens work with you and how walking on the earth barefoot helps you and how um, just loving yourself so simply, just the way you talk to yourself, it all adds up. It's not just one little thing. It's, it's the whole thing it's a package life is a package deal um and it's really important to just like start tweaking all these little areas of your life to tweak 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 um and eventually over time you're like whoa my life has changed and i feel so much better than i did um but it just takes those little small tweaks so that was those groups of questions i actually have lots of questions on this video so i'm going to see if i can pull some of those up um because i want to answer some of those i saw some really cool ones flash past um, so hello everyone if you're just joining me now, um, what are we on now? See, half an hour! How do people do half an hour live streams? I haven't even answered any of your questions. <laughs> but thank you for tuning in anyway. Um, right, let's put up this video and let's see some of your lovely questions. Okay, 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 okay. Um... So how do you guys like these uh, live streams anyway? Do you want me to keep doing them? Are you watching my YouTube yet? I put my, I've uh, put a new video up on YouTube. <laughs> I have. Can you believe it? So tune into that if you fancy it. Um, so let's see if I can get this down. There we go. There we go. Quiet three. Okay. Do, do, do. The pineapple, it says. It says, I told my dad to put it in a pot upside down, waiting. So yeah, oh, can you see my pineapple? Yeah, I actually had two pineapples. The other one was way more golden, but I, I ate that. Um, I literally ate it earlier, and just before this video, when I got home from my walk, I was quite hungry. So yeah, these pineapples, uh, try and get ones with more golden here. Turn them upside down, and this gold, the golden yumminess, will seep down into a Z pineapple, and it will taste phenomenal um yeah pineapple love okay so do you sleep well on a raw food diet yeah yeah absolutely if you're having enough so sleep is a really good marker actually it's really important um to pay attention to your sleep quality and, and to the feedback your body gives you so there's a few like different uh markers on how you're eating so uh your sleep is one huge one so you should be able to you should be not waking up hungry so if you're trying to come to a raw food lifestyle and you're waking up in the middle of the night because you're starving that's feedback that is feedback that you should be grateful for because it's your body saying you didn't eat enough today honey <laughs> you know it's your body saying you didn't eat enough yeah i haven't had enough nutrients i don't want to sleep you know 
And so that's a good indication that the next day you just tweak what you did the day before. So uh, maybe even work out your calories just to know. Um, I don't actually recommend calorie uh, kind of counting all the time. I come from an eating disorder background. That's not what I want to do at all, ever again. Um, so I absolutely believe in tuning in with your own body. But when you're first starting out with a raw food lifestyle, it's really important to actually learn about what's in what. I mean, the difference between the calories of a person and a strawberry are so different. Like I could have a handful of strawberries and it wouldn't be close to what's in the person. I don't even know actually what the calories in a person are. It's, it must be like, someone Google this for me. I think the calories in that are gonna be about 70 calories. Um, I, if you've got a handful of strawberries, you're looking at what, like 20, 11, 11 calories, 20 calories, you know, so it's very different from if you're having like a few of these and some of these, you know, you have some of these with a few dates and bananas, you got yourself a meal, you have a big bowl of strawberries um, and when your body's requiring a thousand or so calories and you're going to leave yourself so calorie deficient and then when you go to bed at night, you'll think, but I ate so much food. And physically you did, you ate a load of fiber, you ate a load of nutrients, you ate a load, just a, a volume, a large volume of food. But have you satisfied yourself nutritionally? Have you actually eaten enough calories? Have you actually eaten enough minerals? Um, that's the key thing. Putting a handful of greens into your, into your smoothies is great. But that's not necessarily enough greens, especially if you're gonna be, if you're removing things like rice from your diet, which are very high in minerals, you need to be topping that up somehow. And the way that you top that up, the way that I don't crave cooked foods in the evening, why I don't need to sit down to a starchy meal of rice, is because I just eat a load of green leafy vegetables covered in a big delicious sauce. And it's so satisfying. And once your body has learned to get its minerals and its nutrients from the greens and from the fruit, it, do, it doesn't, it won't crave it anymore. So calculate if you need, oh my God, no way. So, sorry, John Davis has just pointed out that um, a person, I think that's, this one is a lot, a lot smaller. What does it say? It says, uh, a person is 127 calories per 100 grams. That's like, so high. This is why I can have a persimmon pudding and I don't need to eat for hours and hours afterwards because it's just, I'm like, I'm done for the day. I actually have, let's get it more I have a weighing scale here, so let's have a look. So that's 140 grams. Um, so that's actually, yeah, what does it say? A more than 127 calories for a person, so they're quite high in calories, which is good, because then you can have like a meal of persimmons and you feel satisfied, you feel, like you shouldn't be afraid of calories on a raw food diet. Absolutely don't be afraid of calories. Oh, it says my, my Google says 32. Ah, so we, what are we say in? Is it 32 calories per 100 grams a persimmon? Um, either way, it's a blooming lot more than strawberries. <laughs> and that's my point. You can't judge these fruits by the exact same calorie content um, because they are, they're different. They're so different. And it's really important to learn about that, um, which is why actually my fruit guide, I've made a fruit guide ebook where I go through all the different fruits um, and I explain like the different calories in them and, and what they're good for, what, you know, their pros and cons. Cause each one has its own pro and con and thing to watch out for. Um, that's actually available at the moment. It's five pounds, that ebook, and uh, or you can get it included with the raw food course. So you get a copy of the fruit guide with the raw food course, which is 20 pounds at the moment. Um, so you're welcome to have that too. It says 33 calories per 100 grams for strawberries. I'm sure that's a lot lower. Ca uh, strawberries are really low in calories. So, um, yes. So let's move on. Where was I? Uh, yes, yeah, sleep. So yeah, I sleep well. <laughs> because I eat enough. <laughs> if you eat enough, you, you're generally fine. So pay, pay attention to that. If you're not sleeping well, it can be an, an important indicator. It says, is your daughter raw vegan as well? That's from Rebecca. 
And she is very highly raw, but not fully raw. Um, she don't eat enough greens, that's why. Uh, if she's eating enough greens and she's having lots of green smoothies in the day, she's she doesn't really need like cooked food, but because she doesn't eat enough greens in the day, um, which is not her own fault, it's just how it just happens. Um, and she has cooked food. Plus, it got to a point actually at one point where she was uh, she's almost like just not enjoying the raw. It was almost like having a raw dinner was like it was almost like cooked food was like, oh, am I allowed to like cooked food? And I, I didn't like that. I, I, I want her to feel free and happy about food. And I want raw food to be like this really awesome thing that she has and it makes her body feel good and it's delicious and she enjoys it. I don't want her to think raw food is something she has to eat and she's not allowed the thing she wants. I don't want that. Um, so I was just like, no, nah, I'm not doing this. Like, I, I don't want you to feel pressured. I want you to enjoy raw food so um she has yeah cooked dinners uh, I, they're all whole food vegan so a lot of the things my daughter has is like rice with peas and sweet corn um sometimes i make her some chickpeas uh, sometimes i make soups for her like homemade soup lentil soups and things all no oil no salt no additives nothing that's going to be overstimulating for her um and yeah she usually like she'll have a big salad she'll have green smoothies in the day, she has um, just pretty much what I'm eating in the day. Um, and she likes my salads too, that's a thing, she likes them. She likes uh, the sesame seed sauce as her favourite and sometimes I'll make her like, uh, I make her like jacket potatoes but I do it on a low heat so that it doesn't like get the potatoes too, so hot that it produces like, uh, like burning around the edge or anything because um, that's not very healthy um and so that's something that i do is i will make her the sesame seed dressing so like i'll make myself a dressing um and then i put hers kind of like i, I pour mine out I, I make mine with like mango if i want it low fat and then i pour my one out and then with the base that i've got left over which is just like the tomatoes celery lemon garlic what have you that i always put in um she then I add some sesame to it and I blend that all up to like this really thick uh cre like creamy delicious like it's almost like a hummusy style garlic tomato sauce thing it's just delicious basically um the recipe is in my ebook um and uh I just make that with like some jacket potatoes and she has that like dipped in like that's almost like her ketchup um so she's having raw with her dinner but she's just having like cooked food with it um yeah, so we just find the balance. She's not unhealthy, that's the thing. It's like, if she had these big, major health issues that were causing her loads of problems, we would address it. But uh, she does have, like, uh, her own little kind of... We all have our own little health issues, but nothing. it's nothing majorly bad that would mean we need to, like, drastically change. And she gets a lot more benefit from the way she eats now. I don't want her to get food issues. I want her to feel free and happy around food, you know? I know how horrible it is to have food issues that's literally the life i came from and i don't wish that upon her so i don't i'm not pressuring her to to be anything um you know so all right next one it says agreed about oh so this is joanna who asked me the questions earlier uh, about like running and everything so thank you joanna for your questions um, it says agreed about eating lots of raw fruit and vegetables and getting enough sleep to help you recover my energy drink is usually a green smoothie awesome yeah green smoothie because it's just got everything in it it's got a load of nutrients load of calories load of minerals bish bash bosh done so which fruits and vegetables do you have to refrigerate all the things you have out I keep in the fridge am i doing this wrong ah, ha, ha. right okay so yeah, all right. so my fridge is a cute little mini fridge so i generally don't have a lot of room um so what i like to do is uh keep it out as much as i can so i've got my fridge stocked up with greens and leftover foods so if anything is really 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 ripe and needs to go in right now um, that that is likely to go mouldy or anything such as uh, in this weather in this heat it's um, it's going to be things like uh, your berries like but even in even in the winter the berries are going straight in the fridge I'm not leaving the berries out they'll just mould up um, so I would have like um, 
at this time of year, I've got I've got some of my nectarines in there because they were just really ripe and they were going to go mouldy otherwise. Uh, donut nectarines, oh, they were so good. They were so good. I had to buy some for my mum, and I was like, eat these, <laughs> please eat these. They're so good. Um, also, uh, yeah, berries, nectarines, peaches. Um, anything that's been cut, so if I was to cut a watermelon and it, we, me and Molly eat half a watermelon, I, I'd stick the other half in the fridge. Um, I had cherries in there, all my cherries. Um, so things like peppers, because I use them quickly, they won't really go bad. Um, so like I said, I use like three a day or three every other day generally three or four every other day so generally I'll be putting them like leaving them out just because I need the room if I had a big fridge like a massive fridge I will put them in the fridge They're not a problem because I'd want them to stay more fresh uh, the tomatoes I leave out because they're they kind of they ripen more and they go soft and they just go even more delicious so if I had more room in my fridge I would still leave these bad boys out um, Celery I would keep in the fridge if I had room. Um, oh, and herbs I always keep in the fridge unless, um, like with my oh, what is it called the dill. The dill come um, I put in a glass of distilled water and that keeps it fresh. Um, ginger I would put that in the fridge if I had room. Um, the the blah, 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 blah. words. Courgette. The courgette, zucchini, as my fr my friends across the pond would say. Um, I'm a massive weirdo and I like them when they go with soft. <laughs> oh, I don't know why, I just do. I like it when they're not too, you know what I mean? Like when you cut a, a, a courgette and it's like, it's like really hard and really like, it's almost like got a starchy film on it. I'm not keen. I like it when they go kind of soft and and they've just, yeah, got a squidge to them. So I'll leave them out because I'm a weirdo. Um, okay. Cucumber, I would probably leave in the fridge. But no room. Not with this amount of cucumbers. Are you kidding me? Um, so, yeah. Beetroot, again, I would have it in the fridge if I had more room. Carrots can go in the fridge if I had more room. Um, I just don't. So they're on my shelf. And uh, bananas, I will leave out. So anything that needs to ripen more, like these, by the way, I got mangoes. <laughs> okay, I I'm excited because I haven't had these since last year. I still haven't eaten them yet. Look, I've had them for two days and I haven't eaten them yet. That's how like special they are to me. Oh my god, this is so good. <laughs> I wish you had smell vision and you could smell this pineapple because it's just heaven. I haven't eaten it in like over a year. Oh, and they, they usually were supposed to come out months ago, right? They're supposed to uh, come over to England months ago, but because of lockdown and, you know, that all hoo-ha, it's, uh, I couldn't get hold of them. And I even had some fruitarians in London, I saw their pictures and they were literally like, um, they had mangoes and they were just all green, just all green. It was just so sad. Um, the mangoes will never fulfil their mango destiny because <laughs> they're just too green. Um, so yeah, these guys I've left out because they need to ripen a little bit more. And these ones could they could go in the fridge, but um, some of them, like this one, uh, could go in the fridge. Uh, could might want to stay out because it's still it's not like you could make person pudding with it, but um, it could do with it's not as soft as the others. So. I'll probably leave that out. So anything that needs to be ripened a little bit more, I would leave out. Keep that room temperature. Um, but that's the thing, a lot of my food is actually out, as you can see. So, oh, and dates. I've got dates up at the top there. If you can see, I've got some dates up there. They, they stay out. They say keep me in the fridge, but they don't. Because I'm rebellious and I do what I want. And there's no room in my fridge. So, um, yeah. Oh, I've also got plums. I've got plums here as well. And I've got kiwis, look. I've got kiwis. Um, says, do I get problems with fruit flies? Uh, yeah, of course. I'm a fruitarian, it's like a rite of passage. But generally, if you keep, like these bananas, they're all, they're, they want them, they want them. So what I'll do is I'll get so annoyed that there are fruit, fruit flies, fruit, 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 fruit flies everywhere that I'll want to, um, I'll, I'll maybe stick them in the fridge, stick the bananas in the fridge, 
or I'll just peel, peel them all and chuck them in a, in a glass container in the fridge. Like this, I can, uh, in the freezer, sorry. Um, I'll show you. So, oh, where do I keep them? Oh, so I've got bananas in here, you see, just frozen bananas. And I'll just whack them into a smoothie to make it really creamy, or I'll make like um, oh, banana ice cream. I make banana ice cream with them as well. <clears throat> so yeah, the definitely fruit flies are a bit of an issue. But just take out your rubbish, like clean up after you quickly. Take out your rubbish regularly. You might even want to downsize to like smaller, uh, like fruit and vegetable caddies or whatever, um, and then just like every day take your fruit out or almost like instantly just take take your fruit remains out and compost them or do whatever you do with them um and that will keep the fruit flies away so that's a handy little trick there i don't kill them as much as sometimes you want to i don't because i'm vegan right and i'm against killing but fruit flies are annoying and i've always said this i would not mind sharing my fruit with them if one fruit fly didn't turn into a billion in about five seconds it just does my head in you leave about half a banana on the side and then you just like you move and then there's just like a plume of fruit flies like, oh my god and it's just an infestation immediate infestation you can't keep up with it so you just gotta keep on top of the fruit stuff like you, you're a fruit recycling just constantly keep your surfaces clear and anything that's really ripe that the fruit fries are going to get at just whack it in the fridge or freeze it or something that's my best advice um ah oh, it says lacy says i love your live live streams you should be funded and have your own tv show soon <laughs> yeah right uh, thank you though. Um, I was actually approached a few times by TV people, the media and everything, wanted to do like um, feature feature me and Molly in a program about uh, like alternative lifestyles and all that sort of thing. But honestly, I don't trust um, I don't trust the media, and I, I don't trust that they would be nice to us. Unfortunately, maybe that had just come after I had that Daily Mail thing written about me. They said that it was going to be nice, and then it was all kind of just worded a bit dodgy, and I got social services all called on me and stuff and it's just it was just like I just don't like the way that they twist things to get a rise out of people and to like divide people it's almost like it, 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 these programs often they're not to inform people and say look there's this cool lifestyle or look how you know happy these people are look at how you don't have to conform and how there's all these different things you can try. That's not the vibe. The vibe is, look at the freaks, look at the freaks, you know? And I don't like that, that's, that's me and my daughter's life. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's my daughter's life. I'm not gonna put her up on a pedestal and go like, look at her, look at her, aren't we freaks guys? You know, like, I just, I'm just not interested in the way that the media portrays people to such a wide audience, I think, and, and the way that it kind of like almost goes, look, aren't they abusing their children, poke, poke, to to people, that's what they do. And um, I just think it's really, it's just awful. It just divides people, it causes hate, it causes, it causes people to get angry and offended and upset. And I just, I'm, I don't wanna do that. I don't want our little happy life to be used to f for them to make some money out of us um, um, you know, even though I know I could reach a lot more people and just, I know, I, I know it could be good in a lot of ways, but at the same time, I kind of just want to, I'd rather not be famous. Do you know what I mean? I'd rather not have people know me everywhere and, and just have a niche amount of people know me who I can help. Do you know what I mean? So, um, I'd rather kind of do it a bit more organically the way that we're doing it now. Um, I think it works better for us anyway. But that's a decision I've made. Whether it's right or wrong, you can only do your best as a parent, can't you? So, do your best, release the rest. <laughs> okay, where are we? Oh, look, Qu Qu Quanometer says that a uh, person is around 100, 100 calories each. Who knows? They're bloody more than uh, strawberries, and that was the whole point. <laughs> Ah, uh, what is in a person? And that's the thing, each fruit is so different. You get a massive person that's going to have more calories. Yeah, but a small person it's not going to be as much. So, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, Sylvia says, oh my God, what a nightmare. I don't trust media either. We all need to look at our, our diets. 
approximately 17 million, so I'm reading this off the wrong screen, approximately 17 million die from cardiovascular disease worldwide, and diet is a factor. Diet's a huge factor. And diet is a massive factor, and that's something that's been completely overlooked in the whole of the media. You even just look at this virus, um, at no point has, uh, well, that I've seen, has the media been pushing people to be a bit healthier. You know, to like eat lots of fresh fruits and vegetables are really good for you, you know. Um, they're good for your, your breathing, you know. Uh, what about, what's it, beetroot? Beetroot can increase the amount of oxygen that your body takes in, you know. No one's talking about this. Um, it's all just about masks and, and, and antibacterials and stuff. It's just, it's just strange. Like the media just twists stuff and distorts stuff and doesn't give the full picture and it just doesn't, it just wants to make just wants to sell and get make people interested and people drama's interesting and I don't want to be part of their fabricated drama story I'm not a freak we're not freaks you know it's not a freak show yeah I'm, I'm different and I live life weirdly but um there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> um so it says what do you wash your fruits and vegetables in after you buy them generally distilled water Sometimes if I'm proper lazy tap water, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Sometimes I haven't washed them at all, but I'm fine. So, you know, when you're out and about, you just want to eat the, eat the donut peaches. And you, so you just eat the donut peaches. Yep, I do that sometimes. Um, but if I'm at home and I can, I just wash them in distilled water. But yeah, uh, what else have I got here? With a raw food diet, do you feel more in harmony with the planet Earth? Oh, now that's my kind of question. Do you feel more in tune physically? Oh, you, that's Sylvia. Sylvia. Now that is my kind of question, my girl. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so... Um, I first noticed when I went vegan, so when you go vegan, or when I went vegan, at least in my experience, it was like, <laughs> like Dr. Doolittle, it was like, well like, um, it's, it's just, I just respected animals so much more, and I came from a place of like, just really, really not liking dogs and stuff, like I still have a slight aversion to dogs, mainly because I've been chased by dogs and, and, and like really like, almost like, borderline attacked by a dog where it was literally just it was like an old police dog barking at me and um it was scary it was so scary I cried as an adult I, just, I cried so much this scary dog at me and um I've had them jump up at me while I'm running and scratch all my legs up and chase me and it's just I've had I've always had a bit of a problem with dogs um and they're always up in your face licking you I can't deal with it um so like when I went vegan it was like I kind of like, I kind of liked them a bit more, like in, a, in I just respected their life a bit more and it kind of gave me this more humble side. I suppose when I wasn't vegan, it, always part of me was just like, I'm, I, I need to, to hurt these animals, like to, to eat them. It was almost like I, oh, I've got 10% battery. So yeah, if my battery goes, bye. <laughs> Cause I won't, I won't go back on live after it cuts out. So if it cuts out, Bye guys, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> but um, yeah, I uh, I just found like I found I just got so much more in tune with dogs and, and animals in general. I just appreciate their life. Like before, I would see a dog and I would immediately think like, oh god, like get it away from me. I hope it doesn't run at me. I hope it doesn't see me. Um, whereas when I went vegan, it was like when I saw this happy dog playing around after being exposed to all of the, you know, the hell that goes on for animals in farms. Um, it was just like, um, oh, it was just like, to see a happy animal bouncing around, being loved by its owner with its owner playing with the ball and everything. It was just like, wow, you know, it was just like, wow, I really, it's just so nice to see a happy animal. It's like, I just appreciated it more. And it was, it humbled me because I wasn't kind of like eating animals anymore. I wasn't almost putting my life above theirs anymore. I was almost like just being more harmonious with them. That was when I first really noticed how diet change can <clears throat> tune you into the world a bit more. 
and then going raw vegan oh my gosh it's, it's another level it's another level because it's like it's like you figure out where you fit in the food chain again you know humans have this way of of living where they are yeah have you ever seen the matrix where he says like the human aren't aren't like other mammals every other mammal in society it, it, every other mammal in the ecosystem finds its place to harmonize you know it, it, it and it restores balance and it, and it fits in whereas humans don't fit in we, we destroy we take over we we harvest the area around us and uh, we destroy it in a lot of ways um but when you go raw vegan obviously not completely like i still live like a human i still produce waste and uh litter not, not that i throw it on the floor but just like the wrappers i use and all that i'm not perfect at all i'm not in harmony with the world but i'm more in harmony than i've ever been in my life um because like you do you, you, it's like you fit in the ecosystem with the way you eat now uh like like I, I, humans make sense i eat the fruit i expel the seed and that fertilizes the earth um like even though that's not exactly the way it works because i use a toilet <laughs> it's like you understand where you fit in the ecosystem as a member of this world um and, and like and taking and kind of appreciating the trees like the trees i've always loved trees and had a thing for trees um like they just have a place in my heart you know um excuse me and like this appreciation for fruit trees and the way that they transfer the sunlight into excuse me i'm having pineapple burps <laughs> and the way that they transfer the energy of the sun into this fruit um, and the nutrients from the soil into that fruit and you're just like having it's like a flower that is it that is bloomed and, and the tree wants you to eat it you're not killing the tree to eat the fruit you, you, the fruit is like here have this gift I help you, you help me. Um, and you're taking that fruit and you are it's becoming part of you. You're getting vitamins and minerals and, and, and beautiful food from that. And then you're kind of restoring the seed back to its natural place so it can reproduce. It's like you're in harmony with the tree. It's like there's symbiosis going on there. Um, whereas that's not really happening when you're necessarily eating other stuff. Even when I'm eating green leafy veg, the way that humans harvest it it's true it's bad like, maybe we cut off the whole blooming thing we don't need to just take off take off some of the outer stuff and let it grow you know what i mean but then i can understand where the issue comes with that with um packaging it and everything and it's just so many issues i know i need to grow my own but i'm not very good at growing things unfortunately um i don't know why i keep talking weirdly i'm really sorry um just to, to amuse myself i suppose because i'm like talking to myself in my kitchen um and no one else is like talking with me i'm just kind of like playing around with my voice because uh it makes life more interesting for the video and it's like someone else is here chatting with me okay sorry sorry um uh where was i at Oh, Lacey. She says, um, you might need to try Gaia or Food Matters TV, who are media companies but share more ethical values. Never thought of that in my whole life. Lacey, you're smart. Well done. <laughs> um, uh, Joanna says, great tips. I've heard you can use essential oils like lavender or peppermint to repel fruit flies. Yet to test if this actually works. So I have lavender. I have lavender essential oil. I don't have like a diffuser or anything, but maybe I could few, put a few drops. I'll tell you what I might do. I might put a few drops of lavender on like some tissue or something and just, or, or like cotton wool or something and just dot it around somewhere and I will let you know. Oh, I need, I need a toilet. I need to go wee. So I might um, just finish. I'm <laughs> sorry, TMI. I might just finish up this uh, video because I need to go to the toilet. <laughs> I'm telling you that. Uh, Okie dokie. Um, it says, I think you don't, I think you have done it in the past, but did you do a video on how to, how you distill your water? Um, yeah, oh, I'm going to do a video on this because it's really awesome. Um, so, yeah, I use this distiller here. Yeah. Um, so, basically, I'll just fill up this chamber here. Um, like, take the top off there. Fill up this, this chamber with water from the tap and then turn the switch on 
and then it distills it itself. So um, if you don't know what the distillation is, it's basically the process of which you evaporate water, collect its water vapor and condensate it. Um, and then you have you separate out the uh, what's been dissolved into the solution and you take separate them basically. So you're left with pure water and you're left with the sediment afterwards. So the sediment is in this uh, chamber here, the metal one. And then this is all pure water here, let in the jug. So, Chloe says, this is why we love you. Because I tell you when I need a wee. <laughs> all the voices. <clears throat> it says, um, uh, I know you've mentioned calories, but how do you get the amount of calories you need each day? So you eat until you're full or try to control the amount of eat. Each person is different. So some people on the raw food lifestyle I know, they like to make, they like to, like to weigh what they're eating and they like to work it out. And if that's what they want to do, if that helps them, go for it. I, like I've said, I've come from this eating disorder background where it's just, mm -mm, like I'm done. I'm done with being stressed about food and thinking about food. I, like, and I just need to tune in with myself. Um, so that's why. Um, that's why I don't count it and I just tune in with myself. Plus it's it's like five years now. I've been, or, or six years, since 2014, 15, 2014 or 15, that I've actually been more vegan. You know, it, it's like, it's kind of just second nature now. At the beginning, yeah, 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 totally. Like work it out, learn about the fruits, like learn the difference between the, the what's in this and what's in that. Um, just so you're not eating like, three oranges feeling full and moving on with your day like you sometimes you need a bit more than three oranges um so um yeah it helps at the beginning but i generally just i have like i just kind of in my head it's almost like i know what's high and what's low and i generally have a mixture of both so um i might have like uh a banana, like for breakfast I might have something a bit more light, I might, I might have a bowl of pineapple or something and then for lunch I'm going to have something a bit more heavy so it's going to be like bananas and uh, a banana smoothie or something with lots of greens and then with dates in it as well and then for dinner I'm going to have what I typically have as my salad, even, evening uh, dressing and big salad and stuff so I think I've just, I just kind of know, you just kind of know each day um, and then obviously if I've done like a big long run I'll have like a big massive meal um, and then some days you don't eat as much and some days you need to eat more. So you just, I just flow with it, you know, but it's, it's an art and not a science generally, like, um, with what your body needs. I mean, because it's kind of just like, it, it depends on what you're, what you're up to, the stress levels, what's available in the shops. Uh, sometimes what I eat is just based off of what I can get hold of and what's ripe today. And I kind of just look at the fruit rack and I think, well, what's ripe? What, uh do I fancy, um, and I kind of just let my body do the rest. Uh, like I was gonna have persimmon pudding earlier, and then I thought to myself, you know, it's almost three o'clock. I was like, if I have a big persimmon pudding now, I'm gonna ruin my dinner. So I had pineapple instead. Oh, I really do need a wee. <laughs> it's the pineapple. <laughs> I'm gonna flush out all that vitamin C now, but it's okay, because I'll top it up with, because at, because at my dinner time. So yeah. Um, Chloe says it's a bit of both, so she she appreciates the fact that um, I'm t <laughs> oh you're in for a treat with these five p.m. free Fridays each Friday, aren't you just? Aren't you just? So uh, just want to say thank you for all your lovely questions. By the way, it's really awesome uh, having so much interaction and connection. Um, so thank you so much, and please tune in again every single free Friday at five p.m. Um, we used to have a fruit chat. Stick me on while you're making your dinner. Um, you, if you're having a fruit dinner or whatever you're having, and let's just chat about health food stuff. Ask me some questions and let's just have a laugh. Um, I'm gonna stop. I'm afraid doing the uh, like the make a face out of fruit art challenge, and I'm gonna stop doing the what's that fruit guess in game. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But. Um, you guys didn't really care that much anyway, did you? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's cool, it's cool. Um, we had fun, but honestly, I'm a very busy bunny nowadays. Um, I'm doing a lot of eco work with my daughter. Um, so, 
yeah <clears throat> that's what I'm gonna focus on but I'm still gonna do these fruity Fridays every single Friday at 5 p.m. just to chat with you check in with you and um, so ask me your questions in on the Friday and uh, yeah just to let you know again it is the last week or however long this lockdown is going to be last little bit that I'm squeezing out these awesome prizes for my courses and everything so if you want a raw food course or an inner work course or a kids happiness worksheets course or you want uh, to reconnect with your child course um, they're all only £20. Actually, the Kids Happiness Worksheets, 11 sets of worksheets for your children, is £11 currently. That's pretty awesome. Um, they're available right now for £20 reduced uh, from up to, you know, almost 80 quid. some of them. So get on that if you want that. Uh, just send me a message to say, really, I want your course. Um, and I'll sort it out for you. And uh, if you want an ebook as well, my raw food recipe ebook is available for only £11, reduced from 20 That's available now. If you don't want the courses or none of that, and you just want like uh, to learn about the fruit and get learn how to get good fruit, then you absolutely can do that. Uh, it's only a fiver at the moment. Hey, cha-ching. Uh, so you can get that included with the raw food course, but you don't have to have that. Um, I've also got a few spaces for coaching at the moment. So um, I've just finished up finishing up with one of my coaching clients. So I've actually got some spaces available. So if you would like to have some personal one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, we can go through some recipes that you want sorted. Um, we can go through just some tips and tricks on what you're going through and, and really help you like fine tune those details. Um, and shift you into a positive inspired mentality then that might be something for you um, and I can do some reduced prices at that so it's usually like £150 for a month worth of coaching and I can do that for £99 at the moment for weekly sessions if you want fortnightly sessions I can do that as well uh, just hit me up and we can discuss it and see and find a plan that works for you and that you can budget well and yeah, get you started on your little mission adventure, your adventure to help, health and happiness. Um, yeah, just give us a shout. So, uh, oh, it says, does the raw food course contain the ebook? So the raw food course contains the fruit guide ebook. So it tell, it's got a, a section on fruit. So it goes through all the different fruits and tells you like when they're ripe, uh, how to use them, how to open them, um, what the pros and cons are, how many calories it's got in it, uh, that sort of thing. Um, that's included with the, the uh, raw food course um, and the raw food course has like video demonstrations how to do a fruit shop how to like it, it's a video of how to do a fruit shop how to find fruit it's like the best <laughs> I'm saying it's the best because I had so much fun making it because I had it I made it when I was uh, at my friend in my friend's town uh, near Manchester and she was like my town is terrible for fruit it's terrible for fruit so I was like right I'm gonna go and I'm gonna find the fruit so I took her out and I showed people how to find fruit, how to find the shops that have the fruit. Um, and that, and I, I put that in the course and it's just so, so good, it's so fun. And like watching me find these things is just fun. Um, so yeah, that's in, in the course as well. Uh, so the fruit guide is in the course, but the recipe ebook is not in the course, though the course does contain some recipes. So, but, but the recipe ebook is, is full of more tips and nutritional information about the benefits of each recipe and it just tells you it's got more it's got ice cream recipes which isn't included in the course so yeah if you want any of those little things and just hit me up or if you want any information on anything then message me if you want to just have a chat with me uh for free so i can discuss some of this stuff with you and see if it's right for you so if you want to to, to do coaching or, or buy a book or whatever then no obligation I can give you a 20 minute phone call and we can just chat about exactly what's in it and, and I can send you some pictures of it all or whatever because um, I need to get my blooming website sorted, didn't I guys? I've got a website but don't look at it because it's, <laughs> it's so outdated and it's pretty but I need to sort it and I need to just get it all done. And then there's New Haven, yeah, my friend says <laughs> then there's New Haven where I came to stay with her and it was like, yeah man, your town's well back. <laughs> Oh. oh dear yeah okay right really do need a way now so uh love you guys and i will see you guys very soon thank you so much for tuning in and i'll speak just on see you next friday on a live pretty friday chatty chat bye